different uh, people here of the same eminence and expertise who are looking at how technology can be used to solve some of the most persistent problems that exist. And therefore, I begin by, uh, by talking to Kalpana. Uh, the reason I'm, I'm starting with Kalpana is that uh, you know, if we look at the problems that the world faces, uh, if you look at the 17 SDGs we have, um, all the debate is around sustainability. And that's what the world is worried about. We always worry whether sustainability is an economic option. When we worry that the modern economy is making the world more and more less and less sustainable. But in that framework, uh, given the systems we have today, given the structure of the economy that we have today, and the level of technology, what do you see as a future? What are the challenges? And of course, what do you think are our solutions? First, we was great technology. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Amit. Uh, uh, so, before we understand how technology is connected to the uh, what does it really mean to a citizen? What does it mean to say, I come from a design and architecture background and started off my journey as a sustainable. Uh, home and I understood some simple basics of water conservation. Once I understood and my arena, then I started working with communities. But I thought it's very important in 2016 when there was almost a drought like situation in Gachibani and surrounding areas where we lived. I saw that the efforts that we made for rainwater harvesting were actually helping us uh, in that situation. We did we still not have an attendance. That was a big eye opener to me, and there started my journey. But when it comes to technology, I think in different layers you need to understand this. You know? What does it mean? Um, see, when I started understanding water, I was not, I'm not a researcher. I don't come from an environmental uh, engineering background or a chemical background or understand quality and quantity and stuff. But it's simple understanding that there is something called land use in my own architecture and design language. There is land use, there is a certain amount of water that we can open, and there is a certain amount of rainfall that falls in the cities. And then there are multi layered issues like the roads, concrete, grid. So, uh, simple understanding of land use or the capacity of water in our aquifers or how much rainfall in which area, all this needs to be you know, a basic understanding of this is not available today on any community platform. There's no bird's eye view of the problem. You know, we face urban floods, we deal with it in a certain way, and then um, we are looking at certain plans being made, and the next year we deal with the same thing again. We've not been able to break this cycle of, uh, you know, groundwater shortage or water cell scarcity and then you go through urban flooding. So what is happening is mismanagement in the big way. So I believe that technology will help in big way in understanding this mismanagement first. So we, we are jumping to fix some issues, but first let's understand what's on ground first. That itself, I thought, is a passive exercise which is not undertaken by the ground. Finally, there are 18 national research institutions just in Hyderabad. Tell me, who is actually working on ground with us at a grassroots level? Now, Central Groundwater Department, the State Groundwater Department, we know them. But unless you are connected to central government uh, initiatives or state government initiatives, it's so difficult to crack them or get their support in a certain way. Even the digital data they have is massive. Their dashboards are amazing. But how does it help a citizen on the ground? So I think technology, why it is there, why there's amazing research, everything is sitting in shelves and papers right now. And I think that needs to come up ground in a certain way. So I think there's a dearth to understand the basics, but there's also something already done and we need access to that. Right? So I think this, this connect that is missing is taking communities or just say a normal man away, far away from water, our understanding of water. I mean, to, we were connected to wells and resources. Now we are very tapped and tanker communities and 
they are okay with it. It's okay if a well or a lake next to us is, uh, you know, in a terrible condition. And uh, I don't connect with it because it's, there's no simple understanding that that is connected to your own board well. That, you know, uh, contamination is getting here and health impact, everything, because just because water is not visible to you. There's so many, un, you know, invisible things happening here. But you have no clue. You know, you don't know what is a shallow aquifer, deep aquifer, shallow aquifer, contamination. In Chennai, simply that the shallow aquifer gets saturated. And if they simply use their wells, they can remove the water from the shallow aquifers, use it in their own communities, and create space for more. You don't do that, and then flooding. Flooding drought, flooding drought. What is this contrast in every city? That so, we need technology to understand, but what I feel is that technology should be accessible on the ground to people. Because if that connect is not there, it can be years of research and we can keep on doing and we can keep on talking, but we are not going to be able to make the changes what might be. What do you think, Dr. You know, that big point that Dr. Uh, makes, firstly, that the importance of water, which everybody understands. But she started off by saying how conservation is something that one learns very simply at home. And then the major point that she makes that there are the multiplicity of organizations that work on this. But what does what happens to that point? If that information, that data, that analysis, that science can then populate and be used. Then it is such a simple manner of using existing resources and ensuring that this strange uh, contradiction, that this amazing bipolar tra tragedy of uh, having drought and flooding in the same area in the same year, uh, can be stopped. So, so thanks so, so to that. Yeah. You just add to that, we talked about SDGs. Today, everyone talks sustainability. But tell me one thing why, as cities, we are talking about sustainability in a big way? We are getting water from rivers 200 kilometers away now. What is the carbon footprint? Is that called sustainable? It is not sustainable. So, so, what is this contrast? First of all, we have not understood how we are managing water. Like I said, so SDG is fine. We talk about it when we understand after COVID, too, everybody talks sustainability. But do you even segregate in your own home or do rainwater harvesting your own house? That question is. Never the answer. So I think while we talk about SDGs, as cities we are doing something against sustainability, then how do we? Another point, yeah, you know, my really opens up several issues, and this is another very serious question that um, uh, these are problems that are global and you know very personal at the same time. So who is responsible? Is there a global governance that will be responsible for this? Which the SDGs are, and every, all the 194 countries are responsible, or am I responsible in part for what I do to destroy the environment?